And it's five go on. Listen to this again. This is right here. Oh, oh, high fly. Gosh. Good lord. Baseball point. It's one of the top sounds in all Oof. of sports, gentlemen. Right there. Oof. We will break a twins game down like it is football. As we do here on a daily basis, Doogie with some scoops and a big wild trade and, and a trend happening with the wild that we will talk about. But let's first thank and uh, tip our caps to Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Federated has been a partner of uh, many local sports teams here in the Twin Cities. They are one of us in that they were founded and maintained headquarters in Owatonna, Minnesota. And they are here to help you business owners out there through a difficult year, whether it's a pandemic year or not. It just really helps tremendously to have an insurance company that gives you peace of mind. Find out more about the resources you can get into as a business owner at federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. TCL is a proud sponsor of the Score North Studios. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL. These two guys, Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. High fly, so we to center field. Right back fly. is center Robert. Field. Sounded good. Oh, listen to those. Bam. Oh. Oh. Bam. Oh. Oh. High fly. Oh. Bam. Good Lord. Oh. All right, the Twins uh, The twins avoid disaster. I thought. I kind of thought they were going to get swept there for a second. It really wouldn't have mattered because, like, the seating, the, the, the seating is – really irrelevant because they're going to play in a bubble in round two. Like you don't want to go on the road necessarily because they're playing so well in the first round. So gentlemen, as we break baseball down, like football, football, can we start with a poll that I put out early this morning yeah. on my Twitter account at Phil Mackey? That's right. I said, so as of yesterday, and I haven't checked this morning, but as of yesterday, the matchup in the first round for the twins, they would have been the four seed and the Yankees would be the five seed. Three game series. 13 more Target runs last Field. night, buddy boy. Yankees scored 13. 13 last more night. last night. Yeah. yeah, the Bombers are back. Judge is back. How many are, is is uh, Stanton back yet, or just Judge? Just Judge. He got activated yesterday. Okay. Judge got so, activated. So they're scoring yesterday. 13 runs. They're slow, they're they're slow rolling back. their superstars yeah, back out. Cooking. Okay. Yep. And I said, uh, so uh, 1,300 votes so far here in the last hour and a half or so. I said, Twins fans, who do you want in the first round of the playoffs? Two options: the Yankees or anybody but the Yankees. <laughs> I voted. Sixty-one percent say anybody but the Yankees, and you are cowards. I, I vote. I cowards. voted. Cowards. I voted. What did you vote? I don't want the Yankees. Coward. Coward. I don't want the. Yeah, you know what? I'm the same dummy that said last year, Twins and five. I feel it. I feel it. They got swept again. I here's. What are you afraid of? Okay, you've already. You, it's you, not what I'm afraid of. It's the plan. Here's the plan. <laughs> And the 16 game oh. playoff losing streak, which by the way ties the Chicago Blackhawks from I think 1977 ish or so, like like a, a stretch of 75 to 77 for the longest North American postseason playoff losing streak. End that against somebody else, and then play the Yankees. No, what? All right, what if? All right, here, here's a guarantee. You guys are. Yeah, I'm gonna high. flip it. Sing it, Declan. Let me flip it. No, sing what it. if? What if you are guaranteed, just guaranteed a one playoff win, but you aren't guaranteed to win the series? Would you still want to play the Yankees? You're guaranteed you're going to win a game. I can't guarantee you're going to win a series, but you're playing the Yankees. Mm -hmm. Are you going to take it? Because I'm at the point where it's been 15 years since yep. I've seen the Twins win a playoff game. Over half my life has been playoff losses. Okay. So I want the Yankees, and but first off, I just want a GD win. Right, that's I what I'm saying. I want a playoff win, and I don't care that it's no. the Yankees or not. That, but give that's me what, a playoff. That's right. That's, okay, so you're, that's oh, what I'm so saying. You guys side. You guys are with each other. Uh, a little one. bit. I, no, I don't. You guys get, get out of here. I, no, you guys I, are, no, I want the Yankees. Listen, Phil. Phil I'm not scared of them. No, what Declan's this saying makes, is I want the Yankees, I, but I'm not really. This I makes wait, 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 wait. I want a playoff win. That's all I want. This makes perfect sense. Hold on a second here. One. Hold on a second here. I'll I'll explain this as simply as possible. It's a three course meal. Okay. Give me, give me somebody else to start with for the appetizer. All right, because if I eat, if I try and eat the Yankee Stanton plate, it's going to poison me. All right. Okay, James so, Winston. Yeah, I don't That's want that. Problem. Yeah, I don't want that. I want the appetizer to be another team in which I can end my postseason losing streak, in which I can win a couple games and advance. And then eventually, you're probably going to have to play them. I don't want them no, in the first this round. This is this is tin cup. We are Kevin Costner. We are Kevin Costner in the middle of the fairway. 
Give me another ball. You're a smart guy. Give me another ball. You're a, yeah, you know what? Give me another You're ball. You're a smart guy. Do you remember last year, you, me, Rami, Twins are going to win this series? Yeah. Everyone, I, yeah. I don't, let's listen. The difference here is the 61% of you cowards out there, <laughs> cowards. and Judd Zolgad, smart people, who said that they want to avoid the Yankees in the playoffs, mm -hmm. you are living with baseball fear. And what I'm saying is, Hell yeah. for 16 years, I'm numb to it at this point. The only way I want this story to proceed is if they go okay. through the Yankees. Dick Bramer said it best last night. Dick Bramer on the broadcast, him and Justin Morneau were talking about, you know, right now, they showed the bracket. The Twins would play the Yankees in the first round. Yeah, you and Dick. Which is not great. shocking. And, hmm. uh, and Dick Bramer said, you and Richard. And it, it pumped me up much like uh, that point in Rocky 2 where, where Rocky's like, you know, Mick, uh, you know I, I, I can stop messing with Creed if you want, you know, and. Actually, he said it to Adrian. Adrian says, no, I want you to do one thing for me. Come here. Yeah. Win. All right. And then the training montage hits. <laughs> Dick Bramer says on the broadcast last night, um, I know a lot of people are sweating the Yankees, but I want the Twins to go through the Yankees, not around the Yankees. Right, but, That's how I feel. Right, but you're eventually, I would rather actually do that in a later round series because I don't want a best of three with Garrett Cole starting game one because I'm going to lose that game Yankee, almost certainly. And the Yankees don't want a best of three with Kenta Maeda yeah, starting see, game one Yeah, this is your problem. Either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garrett Cole sweating right, okay, right now. But then the Twins have also been able to hit Shane Bieber. Yeah, the Twins just beat Shane Bieber. If you can beat okay. Shane Bieber, you can beat Garrett Cole. You guys. All right. I'll the, rephrase the, the, this. The Twins knocked Luis Severino out of the first inning of a playoff game three years yeah, ago. Yeah, and what happened? Urban Santana. We don't even talk about that. Okay, so I'll rephrase. By the way, Garrett Cole is he's, he's not untouchable uh, this year. Oh no no no! Garrett Cole was struggling until a couple starts ago when Garrett Cole decided bleep this and shoved and was look at Garrett Cole's <laughs> game by game log and his recent activity. Yeah, he's given up a couple runs this month. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'll rephrase. Ten percent. I'll rephrase this one. Saying that that you're numb to the pain that the Yankees have caused you as a Twins follower. Reminds me, and I've never done hard drugs, but of so, of someone who does heroin, you're numb to it, so you're going to OD. Okay, you don't need to do that. You don't go through <laughs> go through recovery. Look, I'm your counselor, man. Go through recovery. I did this last year, made the mistake, and now and now I've gone through recovery, and I'm a counselor. Let me help you. You're numb. You're numb because you don't feel They're anymore. They're just a baseball team, man. They are just a yeah. baseball team. Yeah, and that and that that's all they heroin's are. not spiked so with we're, something. We're on hallucinogenics, and you've been through the hard stuff. You've been through recovery, and you're trying to get us back on the right yes. path here. Is that what's going exactly on? Exactly okay. right. Got it. Got it's it. day to day. It's also worth noting, all right? It is worth noting. Yeah. The last time the Twins got swept by the Yankees, just, what, 11 months ago, so just a year ago, they didn't have Mike Pineda. They didn't have Kenta Maeda. They didn't have as good of a bullpen. I would, I, was out. Taylor Rogers was better last year than this year, but the overall Twins bullpen is better now than it was a year ago. Mm -hmm. Byron Buxton was not playing in that series. Josh Donaldson was not playing we talked in that about, series. And we talked about all those things about Nelson Cruz is going to make the, the difference. I'm just saying don't have the Yankees for the appetizer. Not give me the so what is your per, so your perfect plan is to like well, you're going to probably but, but have you're to go not, You're not guaranteed to beat anyone in the three-game series. Like, luck, no, I know. I'm trying, to up, a, I'm trying to up my chances here. But the Yankees, I, I would argue right now that, that uh, unless the Yankees, unless the Yankees full, and now they've been hot the last week, so I'll give them that. They've been hot the last week. Hmm. I don't think the Yankees are as good as they were a year ago. And I think the Twins are better in a lot of ways, even though record-wise the Twins are on pace for like 97 wins. Last year they were 103. Yep. I think you could make a case that the Twins, in a lot of places, rotation for sure. Last year they had to start Randy Dobnak at Yankee Stadium because they had no choice. Hmm. They had like two starting pitchers right. and Randy Dobnak. All right, you're not following. They my just counseling. sent Randy you know Dobnak to the minor leagues first. yesterday. You've got to want to help you first. They sent I can't. To the minors. Look at what the Yankees have done. Of late, you've got to want to help you. And until you do, I can't help you. Inject the Yankees yeah, into my exactly veins right. every single year. You go year back out to your Yankee alley, your Yankee street corner, and you do what you but, need to but, do. Okay, one final point on this, and we can talk about other things too, but one final point on this is I'm not just trying to like be bravado here. I, what I'm saying is the way this story has played out over 16 years, and and I'll, I'll steal a phrase from Pedro Martinez, the way that the Yankees are the twins' daddy for a decade and a half. There are kids graduating from high school that only know twins losing to Yankees in the playoffs. And then like the one time that they lost to the A's in 2006 or whatever it was my yeah. life. 
the way that it has played out, the only fitting end, mm -hmm. whether it's this year, next year, in 10 years from now, is to go through the Yankees. And you might I want them to go through the Yankees. Well, yeah, and you might get your wish. What I, I keep telling you is don't do it as the appetizer. They've scored 33 runs against Toronto in the past two games, by the way. And Garrett Cole won again oh, last sounds night. Like they're wasting all their runs on the wrong team. <laughs> that's not how the Yankees work. Football. <laughs> My good man, that's not how the Fox Bombers work. All right, Jake Odorizzi made his return last night, and uh, he was mostly sharp until his fingers started bleeding all over the place, and they had to pull him <laughs> from the game. This is what he said. Everything has kind of been fluky. You know, I, I haven't had any arm troubles, anything like that. My stuff when I pitched is normal. It's just trying to get into a groove, which I think has been borderline impossible for me this year. So, yes, it's frustrating, but, you know, four starts doesn't determine who I am. I think, I, you know, I honestly don't know what to tell you. It's It's been tough. It's been crappy. But you know, when I've been out there, I feel like I've been, especially today, like I felt the best I felt this year. Got swings and misses, everything that I could have wanted. And to have something that I've never had happen to me before is just – you know, one more kick to the groin. If it wasn't a, if it was a blister, I would say that's a, like Clayton uh, uh, Walker Bueller has been dealing with a blister with with the Dodgers. Like blisters can linger for weeks for pitchers. It didn't look like a blister though; it looked like a cut of some kind. Yeah, right? it like was a nail. Or it something. was according to but between what Rocco and Odorizzi said on the post game Zoom, it was about three different things. It was a normal na uh, bleeding around a nail that he ordinarily has in spring training, and it calluses up. But because he didn't have spring training and it, mm. it hasn't calloused up. So that was the thing I think that was bleeding the most at first, and it looked bad. But Odorizzi could pitch through it. Okay, then there's a blister. There's a blister cut situation that is super disgusting on the middle finger of his right uh, hand, which is his uh, obviously pitching hand. And what happened was, so it's in the pad in the middle of his finger there. Okay, okay. it literally burst open. And so I don't know if, if it had started as a blister or what, but all of the stuff behind it started to come out and they couldn't really control it. And so now it depends, according to what both of those guys said, this depends now on how quickly they can get this to heal. It's not really a callus thing because it, it it burst. So it's just a, it's like a flat out cut. That's going to linger. But yeah. it's going to- no way that's going to be cut. fixed in a week. Right, exactly. And so my guess, my guess is he, he misses at least minimum one start. But that's the problem. So the so the bleeding by the fingernail is actually not that big a deal. It looked bad, but I think it was his last pitch. I think his last pitch was thrown to Mankata, if I'm not mistaken, before Stacia came in. And that's when that burst open and they came out to check him out and he tried to throw a couple pitches and to what you just said, he couldn't do it. Uh, so he's almost certainly not going to be ready in time for a three-game series that would start in like what, nine days from now? The 20 or something, 10 days from now? I don't know, yeah. I just don't think, I almost sure think like it probably makes sense at this point to just stick with the Maeda, Pineda, Barrios, and Rich Hill can be in there if you need to handcuff to somebody and then cross your fingers, hope that you get through the Yankees or whoever into the five-game series and then he could be available. I, I mean, I'm not going to play doctor here, but but blisters and pitchers, those aren't just like usually things that heal up overnight and then you're back the next week. Mm hmm Ordinarily, those are things that linger. So, um, yeah, he looked fine otherwise last night. And the bullpen, by the way, came in and retired everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, what is it, 13 straight batters or 15 or something to like end the game? It was like 18. Just a, a perfect performance by the bullpen last night. But let's say let's say Odorizzi does kick this thing in a, in a week from now, and he's, and he's ready sometime around when the playoffs start. Mm -hmm. How does his emergence alter what you guys think about their playoff rotation, either in a three-game series or a five-game series, if they advance? Dex? Well, I still think he's going to be able to start a playoff game. And I think you honestly need him to start a playoff game. Uh, I, I don't... After Maeda and Barrios, you are... And, and Pineda has been fine. I want another bullet in that, in that rotation. And basically, Rich Hill, I don't trust to make a start and or I don't trust him to go over three innings. And Randy Dobnek looks like he's pretty much pitched his way out of being in the postseason rotation in any situation. Um, you need Oda Rizzi, basically, is what I'm trying to say. You you have, you have you know what you got in Maeda and Barrios, I think, at this point. Even when Barrios is maybe ineffective, he's still reliable and he's going to be probably your steadier option. So you need Jake Odorizzi to come back and, and be ready to go. I think so. I, maybe maybe this is a hot take. I think Rich Hill has one playoff gem in him. Mm -hmm. And by playoff gem, I mean like five innings and a run or something. Like I, I think he's got one in him for sure. But I wouldn't necessarily lean on that in the first round. You, no. you, can, you might have no choice in the second round 
because there's if you get to the second round, there are no off days. And so you need five, you either need five different starting pitchers or a willingness to bullpen one of the games and then have those guys unavailable the next day. Yeah. Or put a guy out there maybe in game five or game four on short rest. So it's gonna be it's gonna be more about depth of rotation in the postseason. Um than probably top heaviness Mm -hmm. more than any other year. It'll be really interesting in that second round. I feel good about getting through the first round without Odo. Uh, After that, if if you are serious about making a World Series run, I think you have to have him in some some form. Like, I just don't see going through the uh, Division Series and the ALCS, I don't see how you get through there with the pitching staff that you currently have without him. Because starting-wise... And the Twins, look, the Twins have never shown with this ad- administration a willingness to take huge chances and gambles and bring guys back. And if you brought Barrios back too quickly, I think it probably blows up. So so that first round, I actually feel pretty good. Like right now, I feel pretty good about that one. Um, but if you get past that one and now you are playing five games and then potentially seven games and you're telling me that, that uh, Jake is not available... I'm starting to feel like it's going to take um, it's going to take not a miracle, but you're asking a lot. All right, actually, back to the Yankees thing for a second off of this. Football. Back to the Yankees thing. <laughs> the Yankees have a two man starting rotation basically. They've got Garrett Cole, who's one of the best pitchers in baseball, and they've got Masahiro Tanaka, who's really good. He's a good, solid number two starter mm-hmm. who can go deep in games. Uh, he hasn't gone all that deep into games this year, but he's, he's this is a, this is a good year for Tanaka. After that, you've got Jordan Montgomery, who's just kind of a guy. You've got J.A. Happ, who's like pushing 40 and has bounced around to half the league. He's fine. Like, he's not he's not terrible. These aren't these aren't like, you know, minor league guys that you're turning Montgomery's to. got good stuff. I do like yeah, him. And, those, and he's fine. But like Montgomery this season, for instance, uh, he has a, an ERA near five in, in eight starts. And I don't think you would look at him and say, oh, man, if the Twins lineup has to face... Jordan Montgomery, they're going to be in for a long night. Like his career ERA is over four. He hasn't been effective over the long haul since 2017. And so he's just kind of a work in progress. So basically it's Garrett Cole and Masahiro Tanaka. Mm-hmm. So where I will agree with Judd's Yankees point is I, I want, throw. I want the Yankees, but the twins would actually have a much greater advantage against the Yankees in a five game series, yes. assuming that Oda Rizzi can pitch than in a three game series. Deeper, yes. So I will agree with you on that. Because if you start to lay out the rotations in a five-game series, and the Twins are, you know, the Twins don't have anyone as good as Garrett Cole, mm-hmm. but the Twin, but Maeda when he's on is as good as anybody. So you can you can put that feather in your caps. So you have Maeda, Pineda, Barrios, all three guys who can be lights out, and then you got Odorizzi, who was one of the best pitchers in the American League last year. If he comes back from the blister thing, and let's say Rich Hill is available for like a game four or a game five, sure, and the Yankees are digging into. Devi Garcia, 21 year old, like decent prospect, but has never pitched on a stage. I don't want to be done in two games. It's just, it, like, it, it, I don't it, want the, those two and bang, I'm just done. A five game series against the Yankees would be a bigger advantage for the Twins than a three game series. So I agree with you on that. Okay. Super. I'm fine there. Cool. Football. <laughs> I'm fine. I mean, you're going to probably have to play them. I, I'm not trying to get you around playing them completely. I'm just saying I don't want them in the first round because. We, we talked so many times last year about, well, with Cruz there now, it's going to make a difference, blah, blah, blah. They, they went and got swept, all right? So I'd like the Twins to get cooking a little bit. I think there's a lot of teams in that first round that they certainly can win two games against. Uh, get going a little bit, get your confidence, and to your point, then get the Yankees in either the second or third round where the series is longer, get into their pitching more, and, and then if Odo's back... I think you feel decent. But how much better is it, too, the fact if you are the home seed in the wild card round, so you would host them for all three possible games, correct? And then if you even have to play them in a DS, you're in a bubble. So basically, you never have to go to Yankee Stadium. So I don't, again, this is just me. Like, yeah. this is just me. But I, I don't think that matters at all. Like, this year, there's no fan. So I get that what I think matters, like, it's different if the Twins have to go into New York and maybe there's still some mystique or something. I don't know. But... There's no fans. All right. No one's booing you. It's just an it's an empty structure. So what you're what you're saying on the surface is exactly what I thought, and it makes perfect sense. But if you look at the success that Twins have had at Target Field, 
here's the difference that I never thought about. And, and in the bubble, it's a good thing because everyone is going to be uncomfortable. The amount of comfort the team that it feels like the twins have at home just because of the yeah. environment the and, record's and, amazing. and going home to your house and sleeping in your bed. I, I really think, and this is debatable about how much criticism players might deserve about this or they don't. I really think this whole thing, uh, especially post Cardinals COVID, when they told players, go to the hotel, go to your room, shut the door, room service, do something, but don't leave. I really think that that takes a toll on some teams and players. And and when you look at the success that the Twins have had at home and their home record versus their road record, there's no denying there's something there. I agree with that. So it let's is weird. Keep, so, but but the neutral site, the bubble is great because everybody is equally as uncomfortable. Yeah. Which, if I'm the Twins and I'm playing the Yankees. I'm cool with. So here, I, I did pull up the standings here. So with just over a week to go in the regular season, were there nine games left or something? So like week, week and a half to go. The Twins, after last night's win over the White Sox, are three games back of the White Sox in the loss column. I think it's like two and a half games back overall in the division, something like that. Uh, so it's uh, even if they win, it's unlikely that the Twins would catch the White Sox unless the White Sox really tank after this series is over. So the Twins are kind of locked in there, and the Twins are far enough ahead of Cleveland, who's lost every game since that series now. They've lost seven games in a row. Wow. Twin, the Twins are far enough ahead of Cleveland, where the Twins are pretty solidified in that second, uh, the second seed in the division. This is very confusing, which means that they, <laughs> that they are now, as the second-place team in your division, you are now being seeded between four, five, and six with the other number two teams in those divisions. So you're competing with... The Yankees and right now the Astros for seeding. Well, the Twins are six games up on the Astros, so that there's no worry there. So it's basically the Twins and the Yankees jockeying for the four and the five seed right now, unless the Yankees were to leapfrog the Rays, which right. probably isn't going to happen. They're three games back of the Rays, or if Toronto re leapfrogs the Yankees, and I don't <laughs> think that's going to happen either because I think the Yankees are catching fire and they're just better. So, anyways. The Twins are one game up on the Yankees in the loss column. They are two games up overall. The difference between where that four or five game, uh, three game series would be played. So if the Yankees catch the Twins and both remain in second place, then that series would be played at Yankee Stadium instead of at the comfort of Target yeah, Field. So I, I that, like that, that does one. matter to some like extent. It doesn't matter as much as other years, though, where there's fans just drooling all over you and yelling and stuff. I think there's a better chance that the Yankees rally and leapfrog the Rays right now than there is that Toronto gets back above the Yankees, don't you? Like, it's going to take a lot for them to do that, but they are so damn hot. I don't think the Yankees are catching them. I, I really don't. The Rays are so good and just so steady and consistent. It would take the Rays... Do they play each other? That would be the only thing. If they play each other... I'll check that out real quick here, just for fun. Then we'll get into this wild... Uh, the wild trade that was made yesterday in a scoop with Doogie. Cleveland skid by the way, is remarkable because it started with three consecutive losses at home to the Royals. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, I get the twins sweeping you at Target Field, and yeah. you've gone to Wrigley now and lost uh, two run one-run games back-to-back. -back. I totally get that, right? How did you lose three consecutive to the Royals? I mean, it's baseball, yeah. so it's weird, but... The, Yan the Yankees play one more against Toronto today. They play three at Boston, which they, they should win a couple of those. I could win in Boston right now by myself. Four at Toronto slash Buffalo. I could go play the Red Sox and win by myself. Three against Miami. Playing so, every position. <laughs> they batting one through they, nine. They don't play the Rays. In fact, they've lost almost every game they've played against the Rays this season. They've only beat the Rays twice. So, to sum it all up, Twins and Yankees are headed for a matchup, it looks like, in the first round. It would be better, to Judd's point, if that matchup took place later in the playoffs because the Twins have a deeper pitching rotation. But I hope the, I hope the line goes through the Yankees either way. All right.